Fun fact, there is not just one, but two denoisers in Unreal Engine, and these can help get rid of noise in path traced renders. The first denoiser is Intel's Open Denoiser, and that's enabled by default when you open a new Unreal Engine project, but it was only recently that I found out there was another denoiser you can activate from Nvidia, and it's called their Optics Denoiser, and it's supposed to have an AI component that helps reduce noise faster, and also a temporal component that helps to reduce noise over time, which is really useful for people who are doing animations or virtual production. So how do you enable it? When you're in the engine, simply head over to your plugin section and in there search for denoiser, denoise. Immediately you'll see both denoisers in your list, one of them being the open image denoiser that I mentioned, which is activated by default, and optics denoiser, which is currently experimental. Simply check the optics denoise box and to make it your default, deselect open image denoise. And we can access the controls for that within the post process volume as usual, heading down to the path tracing section and then making sure that denoiser is checked. So is either of these denoisers actually superior to the other? Let's find out. I've done renders with both denoisers at a hundred samples, which is in fact quite noisy. Let me show you that right now. If I go to my path tracing and then in my post process, I'll just select 100 samples which calculates very quickly and this noise is going to be hard to clean up without any kind of flickering or splotchiness and I'm, aware, I'm well aware of that so this is kind of a bit of a stress test. Let's start by having a look at the shot with no denoising at all so we really get a sense of what's problematic. Very very obviously the building on the right hand side uh, is a is very noisy. It's a very deep shadowy area. And as I said, the building at the crossroads uh, is having trouble with sampling as well because there's some specular highlights there that are uh, just dancing around like, like crazy. So let's see how Intel's open denoiser handled this shot. So there's a lot of clean areas in this shot. You can see, I mean, for instance, the volumetrics at the top of the screen look very clean and the buildings on the left seem very clean as well. Um, there's some splotchiness going on uh, on the building on the right that I mentioned, but it's it's not that bad. But most distracting is the building at the crossroads, I think, where the, all the specular highlights were. That's become just a mush, really. But aside from that, I just said this is actually pretty good. So yeah, there's areas that are very clean, but to get there, it's had to smear the image. It's had to completely smush it. So right here, there is practically no texture information retained in this building area here. That's just gone. Um, there was actually some fairly decent detail there. And let's see, the, I'd say the pavement as well has pretty much lost all definition as well. Okay, we've seen Intel. Let's have a look at optics. Let's see how that handled this 100 sample shot. This is interesting, actually. So I think the building on the right to start with, this is flickering a bit more than it was in the other shot, but it also has retained more detail. I would have said also the building at the crossroads, although it is still a complete mush, it does seem to be a bit more stable, actually, in terms of temporal. Uh, it's definitely holding a bit better, but at the same time, it's still distracting. You know, you wouldn't use this shot, but as a stress test, that's quite impressive what it's managed to do there. So let's punch into 400% and see how it's handled some of those textures. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to pause it here. Now, I think it's handled the building uh, brickwork better. Now it's much of a muchness. We're going quite far in. I'll put them side by side on screen here so you can get a sense of what's going on. But I think it's done a better job of retaining detail here. And it hasn't just made it a smear, but to play it back, you know, we're still getting all sorts of buzzing and wibbliness. So now I've done Intel and Optics with 500 samples each. Intel at 500 seems quite nice actually uh, this is this is a pretty render i like this with the very singular exception of the building at the crossroads that is still dancing around like nobody's business it's not sampling those highlights very well you'd need to throw more samples at this image for that to have some stability so that's a bit disappointing at 500 samples actually i, I was expecting better <laughs> i'm so disappointed in you intel i expected more from you and the texture detail i think is 
there with more samples i'm getting a bit of specular dancing as well there's some there's some flickering going on which is definitely to do with the specular texture that i've got to simulate puddles it's 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 nice when you're zoomed out it's nice if you don't look at it too hard and finally optics at 500 samples as before not as much definition but it doesn't draw my eye as much the building on the right isn't dancing around as much either there's really not that much going on there in terms of noise uh, or splotchiness there's texture detail in the brickwork on the building and on the pavement uh, as a pixel peeper <laughs> this is much nicer it does depend on what you're rendering it always depends on what you're rendering but for this shot and for this test optics absolutely took that it's nice to see more options like nvidia's optics denoiser finding its way into ue5 giving us a few more options than the basic default. I'm sure some of you already knew it was there, but I didn't, and I wanted to share it with you just in case, because I think it's a good tool to have. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.